God's Providence, by Father Marcelo Rodrigues Ocanha. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, He has dispersed abroad, He has given to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. Now may He, who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. By providence we mean the supreme wisdom with which God governs all things. After all, everything is the work of His hands. Everything is divine grace sustaining our miserable life that depends on the hands of the Creator. Certainly all of us, one day or another, in this life, seeks answers to our thirst for knowledge on, or our physical needs in God. Because we were educated, we were guided to ask, to seek, to plead to God who comes in favor of our needs. Providence is exactly that, providing, supplicating, and trusting that a force greater than ours, despite our efforts, our works, is continually acting in our favor. Just trust. In addition to satisfying our needs, the dynamics of providence lead us to understand that there are also the needs of others that deserve our attention. Therefore, distributing goods and trusting in the, ju in the justice of God who looks to everyone as a true, loving, and provident Father. The saints, particularly the founders of our orders, congregations, and charitable works, trusted above all in the providence of God and committed all their strength, all their commitment, to a work knowing that it was not simply theirs, but the Creator's. Trusting in providence is also being a co-participant in the work of creation, because God did not leave everything finished and definitive. He wanted to rely on the work of the hands of many men and women throughout history. This is what we call a vocation, that is, the will of God extending through the arms of those He calls in a true providential act. Jesus Christ, the firstborn Son, revealed to us that divine providence is materialized in the way we welcome and care for one another. To this end, he taught that his apostles that love of neighbor is the supreme law. Furthermore, with his own attitudes of approaching the poor, the sick, and the marginalized, he revealed to us the merciful fate of the Father. Let us, therefore, be disciples of divine providence by sharing what we have, by welcoming and walking with those who no longer trust people, by respecting the other and their differences and limitations. We will certainly see multiplied efforts and commitment to the goods needed to continue persevering in the work that Lord has entrusted to us.